All right, guys. It is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking about an over-the-top beautiful Saturday morning in the end times. <clears throat> is it Saturday or Sunday morning? It is a Saturday morning <coughs> in the end times. And that is Saturday morning, September 2nd. 2023 here as the weird Labor Day weekend 2023 slogs on and uh, with everything to think about on this spectacularly beautiful morning I'm thinking about dying well I mean well sort of thinking about myself dying, but just thinking about, thinking about death. I don't know, am I the only person who, I probably spend more <clears throat> time just thinking about death, whether my own death, uh, everybody else's death, humanity's death, this planet's death, uh, and then I do about, <clears throat> well, I was going to say I spend more time thinking about death than I spend thinking about death of the planet, but maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not exactly right. So anyway, a couple of things that have happened in the last 10 hours. So, uh, if you listen to my <clears throat> rant about flakes yesterday, uh, where I think I somewhere dropped in there that famous John Lennon quote about uh, <clears throat> life is what happens while you're making other plans. Well, I think the word, that sentence could also read, death is what happens when you're making other plans. So, uh, but in that rant yesterday, I was talking about the, the, these fucking flakes who on Thursday night just never showed up at Bugs in a Jar Farm. They had rented the Seahorse tiny house. Never showed up to this minute, obviously. I have never gotten <clears throat> one word of explanation from these fuckers. Never showed up, but what the hell, I got the money, and I didn't even have to change a sheet. <clears throat> so yesterday, this very nice couple drives up here from New York City also renting seahorse. So they show up about five o'clock yesterday afternoon. Very nice young couple uh, from the city. They were so excited to get out of the city for uh, <clears throat> a few days. Oh, oh that's right. They uh, said they were getting away from their children for a few days that they had managed to unload the kids uh, to grandma for a few days. And uh, so I bring them up to Seahorse. They absolutely love Seahorse. Everything about it is everything they were thinking, and then some, they were absolutely happy with the place. Uh, <clears throat> so they told me they were going to go out and have a nice dinner in Ithaca on this beautiful Friday night, come back, and uh, have a fire, and they were only going to be here for one night, and then they were heading on to, uh, I guess... It's up there by Sandy's Letchworth State Park is where they were planning to be tonight. And 
So <clears throat> they go into Ithaca and have dinner. And they come back and about 10 o'clock last night, I saw that they were uh, having a, <clears throat> a fire up there. They, they had a big fire going. I could hear them talking. I could hear the woman laughing. This, this couple was clearly having a fine time uh, it, around the fire uh, on a beautiful moonlit evening. You know, the super moon was just coming up, which is absolutely gorgeous up there in the pines. They seem to be having a perfect evening. So then what happened? So that's around 10 o'clock. So right around midnight, I would say about 1130, this other couple uh, who are staying in the Blue Dragon tiny house just got home from Ithaca. They had been up at the Cornell Observatory looking at the supermoon and the rings of Saturn at Cornell last night. So they get home at 11.30 and tell me that when they were coming up, they saw the people in Seahorse leaving at 11.30 last night. Uh, they just, it, it, it was just kind of weird, and, and, and I said, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I didn't believe them, so I didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, that this uh, couple was heading out of it, heading out into the night. That uh, according to the second couple, the first couple, apparently it sounded like they had packed up their shit at eleven thirty at night and fled into the night. No word to me about anything being wrong. Uh, so I go up there. So it's getting close to midnight. So I, I head up to the, uh, to Seahorse, the tiny house. They are gone. There's still embers in the fireplace you know, smoke coming out of the fireplace. There's still em hot embers going in the fireplace. Uh, the lights are on uh, in, in the tiny house. <clears throat> Go up there, no sign of these people. No note from them, nothing. They have packed up their shit and fled into the night without a single word. And, and I'm thinking, well, Okay, I still don't have to change a sheet. You know, I've been paid. I've already banked the money for a weekend rate. That's ninety-five dollars I put in my pocket uh, from these uh, from from these people. Not one word to me. <clears throat> Disappearing into the night. So obviously, I come back. And I and I emailed them and, and said, guys, you know, you know, what the hell happened to you that you were ch clearly enjoying yourselves at 10 o'clock last night and then you're gone at, at 1130? Is there something I need to know? And of course, what, what I was preparing myself for was the B word, the double B word. And I thought they were going to tell me that they had found fucking bed bugs. Which strikes, if anything strikes terror into a vacation super host's heart. <coughs> so I'm thinking they had found some goddamn bed bugs uh, and, and fled in terror. And uh, so I sent out that message <coughs> last night. So I get up this morning and open up my email and I have this message from this very nice young woman. Uh, and she said, Sam, uh, 
you know, we absolutely loved it up there. And they were having a perfect evening, just as I thought. And I guess they got a phone call. I, I, I didn't even realize the damn phone worked up there. Um, they got a phone call that her best friend had died. Just out of nowhere. I, there was no explanation of how her bet the, the, these guys were like 30 32 years old I'm assuming that probably a car wreck or maybe fentanyl uh, who knows she said out of nowhere uh, she got this horrible news that her best friend was dead and they threw everything uh, into their gas sucking car and fled back to New York City to to deal with this shit and uh, so I just told her to, you know I emailed her back and I said I'm very sorry to hear that uh, and, and you have a free night in Seahorse whenever you want to use it so uh, this is how is that how life happens when you're making other plans or death happens? Just how quickly. And so the other thing is, all of this and uh, all of this crazy shit is going on <clears throat> around midnight. And I, so, somewhere in there, I recorded this rant. Uh, <clears throat> while I was waiting for the kids from who were going to Cornell to come b back and get them settled in, I uh, recorded this rant about that motherfucker scumbag uh, murdering that 11-month-old baby and uh, now wanting the taxpayers, now wanting the taxpayers to pick up the tab to cut his dick off because he claims he is a woman trapped in a man's body. Uh, this fucking murderer uh, who, who needs to, uh, well, I don't need to repeat that rant. So, <clears throat> I record that rant. And then, and, and then, somewhere in the middle of all of this craziness, uh, all of this shit happened. All of this crazy shit happened between 10 p.m. and midnight last night. So, the other thing is, which may or may not have something to do with that uh, big old BLT sandwich followed by this uh, big old scoop of blackberry cobbler drowning in vanilla ice cream... Uh, at 10 o'clock at night. So I have this delicious sandwich, this delicious cobbler, and, and, and I'm joking to myself uh, about heart attack on a plate. So I have this big old thing of cobbler. I'm feeling absolutely fine. I eat it inside the house. I come out to the tiny house and I was carrying... What was I carrying? My... I have my computer in one hand and my second margarita in the other. So I open up the door of the tiny house, which is seven feet across, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I, I just got really lightheaded. Just like, just like one heartbeat, I was fine. The next heartbeat, it, it, I was lightheaded. It, it, it was like my chest went completely empty. And both of my arms, both of my arms at the same time, and I am talking from my shoulders to the tips of my fingers, they didn't exactly go numb, 
but they were, 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 it's hard to explain, it was somewhere between this tingling and going numb, and I almost dropped my computer and my drink, I mean, it's three steps across uh, this tiny house, from the door to the little desk, it's three, it's, I don't even know if it's three steps, two steps, I barely made it across a seven-foot room without dropping my drink and my computer, and I managed to get my computer and my drink on the, uh, on the desk, the little desk beside the bed, without dropping them. And uh, fuck, thank God I was, I, I was right beside the bed. And so I just uh, crashed into the bed on my back. And, and I just lay there. And probably for about 30 seconds, uh, I, I mean, the room was spinning. Uh, my arms, both of my arms were pretty much worthless. And, uh, and then, after, I don't know, 30 seconds, whatever it was just seemed to pass. And, uh, what, what's been going on for the past several days is my, in my left arm, and whatever that muscle is on the back of your arm, is that your triceps? But anyway, whatever that muscle is on the back of your arm, so just, just above the elbow, I've had this uncontrollable muscle spasm going on. Uh, you know that, we have those rapid muscle spasms. That's been happening. And the other thing that has been happening is... In my left foot, the fourth toe of my left foot, I mean, I, I can feel it right now, is, 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 it has some sort of weird nerve thing going in it where my toe is just like curling in, and, and, and it's all I can do to uh, stretch my toe back out. I've got this weird shit going on with my left toe. I've got this weird shit going on with my left arm. Uh, I'm, you know, almost ready to black out with uh, both of my arms and going and, and losing uh, control of, of my ability to grip. I mean, what the fuck of this had happened when I was driving down the road holding a fucking steering wheel? Anyway. Uh, you know, get out there and fucking enjoy it while you still can. I mean, you, you just, you, 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 you never fucking know, guys. Uh, all I know is, uh, if any of you ever get a phone call that, uh, that Hambone is died suddenly, just, uh, I, I hope to hell it was quick and painless. And if I am setting myself up for a stroke, uh, be careful what you wish for. Uh, but, it, but if I am setting myself up for a stroke, I want it to be a massive one. And I want it to do its job. The, the, the thought of, uh, the, the thought of having a stroke that doesn't kill you, uh, or being paralyzed, anything like that stroke, paralysis, where you can't use your fucking arms and your legs, uh, it, 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 it strikes a hell of a lot more terror in, into me than the comfort of dying. 
So anyway, guys, that's what I'm thinking about on this spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful morning in the end time. So I got to wrap this up because I have two more sets of people showing up or not. It's going to be a full house at Pugs in a Jar Farm the next two nights. The little dog and I are, who anyway, I just found out has fleas, the little flea bag and I will be staying in that goddamn trailer for the next two nights. Anyway, get out there and enjoy not having a stroke while oh, you still can. You never know when the Grim Reaper will come knocking. We all have a date with the Grim Reaper. I'm off to go find a five gallon bucket with some sawdust in it while I still can. Bye guys.